Hello, my name is Patrick Kniebel, and in this tutorial we will have a closer look um, on reflectance and roughness, because both together play an important role uh, when creating materials. But before we go on, uh, let's have a look at some images. This illustration shows the relation between surface and the reflection quality of a material. The more uh, smooth the surfaces, the more crisp the reflections are. And the more rough the surfaces, the more blurry the reflections will get. It also seems that the more rough the surfaces, the less reflective the uh, material is. But this is not the case. Let's see how this looks like on real photos. Here we can see different uh, materials on uh, real photos. We can see how the surface roughness or smoothness can change the appearance of the material. We can see here three uh, plastic figures, and uh, the middle one even seems to be a totally different material compared to the left and the right. But the only difference here is the finish, it's the exact same material. Let's see how this works inside Fear Studio. So now back here in Thea Studio, we have a simple setup, two tubes, and uh, both tubes share the same uh, scattering values for diffuse, reflectance, and index of reflection. But this tube over here is divided into 11 uh, sections, so this one has a roughness of 0, the same like this one over here. The second one has a roughness of 10. And so it goes on with 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. But like I say, these values are all the same for all of them. And this one too. So let's have a look. As you can see, that we have an increment of roughness on this tube. And this one stays the same. Well, if you remember uh, this plastic figure I showed before, this is also the same material but with different uh, finish. And if we look at this tube over here, we can see that this one is probably between this two. This one here is probably on this side over here. And this one, I would say this one over here, maybe a mixture between these two. So you can see that FIA reproduces exactly how it works in uh, reality. We have one material and if we incre increase roughness we get the same material but with a different finish and that is very important and it's part of physically based uh, rendering system. So we don't need this anymore. Now uh, let's select this tube here and we go to our roughness setting and we are going to add a texture, a grayscale, a grayscale texture. You see that uh, is a grayscale from white until black and also divided uh, in increments of 10. So if we set this now, the roughness to 100, Fear will read this map and notice that we get exactly the same division like in this tube over here. So, if we want to create a roughness map and we need a roughness of uh, 50, we can create in Photoshop or in any other um, painting program um, a 50% uh, gray image and this will correspond exactly to a value of 50 uh, roughness in uh, FIA. So it's quite easy to create uh, um, roughness maps knowing exactly the values. Now you see when you add a, a roughness map, to read the uh, only the roughness map we have to set the roughness to 100. But this also means that uh, we are telling FIA that the brightest color here, white, represents uh, 100 roughness. Because we can also 
set this to 50. And what happens is now that everything gets shifted. You see that this one is now round 50 over here. And so we have really fine detail on how our roughness map, um, uh, how uh, roughness will work on our object. But um, we can also go to 30. And you see we, can, we are shifting it even more. Now this one here is a roughness of 30. And this one is still roughness 0. But we can also do it a different way. We can set this back to 100. And we go into, we select the map to our tone mapping. And now we have this clamp min and max values. So we can say, I want to clamp the brightest color to a value of 50. This means now that everything from here to here is now clamped to a value of 50. You see, this produces a totally different effect than setting a value of 50 here in roughness. So, uh, when do we uh, use this? Often we will use this when uh, we have created a map. We don't want to go back to Photoshop to correct some things. And uh, let's say we don't want to have 0% uh, uh, roughness, or in other words, 100% uh, black in our map. So we can set the min, let's say, to 20. You see, now the minimum roughness is 20. Um, we can also uh, make use of the gamma, which uh, will only affect the grayscales and not pure white or uh, pure black. This can also come in handy sometimes to shift to one way or the other for slight adjustments of the map. So here we see how we can use a texture to control our roughness. Now uh, let's have a look at a different scene. I have loaded the material simulation scene and applied the same uh, black plastic like we had before with the tubes. So let's start rendering this. And we see we have a roughness of uh, zero. But this time we are going to add a bump map. Now this is quite strong, so I will lower this something like 50. And um, you can see that the bump map also um, affects the roughness of the surface, but in a much uh, stronger way and a uh, much bigger way. But we can also go to the coordinate system and uh, make the map a little bit smaller. And of course, we can also combine it with uh, roughness. But you see, especially for plastic materials, you will see that there is a bump map often applied. Uh, being this in automobile um, industry, where we have a lot of plastics, they have some um, textures that get applied to the plastic parts. And um, you see, with a roughness of zero, but adding a bump, we get a totally different look. So if we decrease the bump furthermore, you see we can get all kinds of um, surface finish. So, but um, yeah, there is something more I wanted to show. and. Um, Oh yes, something very important too. Uh, it's about reflectance. Uh, sometimes we may be tempted uh, to add a reflectance map to give some variation to the material, but this is actually wrong. Because as soon as we uh, change 
for example, the reflectance value to something different, we are creating a different material. So making changes to the reflectance or the index of refraction is actually changing the material. It's a different kind of material. It's not the same plastic anymore. So we should only use a reflectance map if there is a change of the material. Uh, let's say we have a brick wall where there is a difference between the brick material and uh, dirt or the mortar material, which are different. In this case, we could use a reflectance map that corresponds to each uh, material. But in general speaking, if it's just a pure material, like this plastic, um, we should not use uh, a reflectance map. Okay, so there was something else I wanted to show, and for this I'm going to change the material. Yes, there is, uh, let's see over here. Yeah, let's change this to uh, stainless steel metal. And here again, uh, in the photos I showed before, there was a metal with this fine uh, scratches. So we have our material setup. We go to the roughness and let's find the texture over here. So and we can set it to 100. But you see, the scratch map is uh, inverted. I mean, the scratches are in black and the rest is in white. So you can see it over here. We get uh, uh, the reflections only on the, on the scratches. So what we have to do is select the map, go to the tone mapping, and invert the map. So now we have the scratches, but you can also see they are <laughs> quite strong. Uh, first of all, what we can do is, mm, in this case, I would say we play with the gamma. Put the gamma down, so we get less scratches. And we could also play with the, um, um, yeah, with the max. And say we want that our scratches have a roughness, let's say, of 30. And as the scratches are quite big, let's go to the coordinate system and set this to, let's say, 3. So it will take some time, but you can already see that we are getting imperfection scratches all over the place. We can combine this, just taking this map again, flipping it in the bump map, but using a very low bump, something like 1. Go inside, also change the coordinates to 2. Maybe in this case, could increase it something like 5. But you see, what we are getting is <clears throat> a quite strong st uh, scratches on the surface, uh, very heavy, so probably the bump is too much. But what about this uh, very fine scratches? This kind of scratches you only see uh, when you turn the object on the highlights, you see suddenly very fine scratches even if the surface is very polished. So in this case, what we can do is actually, um, yeah, take out the roughness over here. Um, by the way, I, I created this material before, so it's a little bit faster for this tutorial. And just put it in, and you will see 
Sophia, we work with materials, not with uh, material components. So what I added is a quoting on top, because this fine scratches are actually are happening because of oxidation uh, through air. And uh, even if you clean it, you will always see this kind of uh, slight blurriness with this fine scratches on top. So what we do is we add a quoting the same color settings like on uh, metal and we put over there the roughness with a very slight bump and on the metal material down here we just have a normal roughness without bump and this will produce this very tiny imperfections but uh, we also can go the other way around for this I have this material and here we have an oxid uh, oxidized metal with heavy scratches or again I played here with the same uh, scratch map using a clamp over here and giving a bump so the bump is inverted and here I used a color in reflectance because here we are talking now of a metal that is uh, oxidized and this means that uh, the metal gets darker through oxidization so here we can use this map and then where we have the scratches if we go to the roughness map it's exactly the inverted part so the scratches are now something like dirt they have a different reflectance and they have a hundred percent roughness. So playing with this map and these channels, we can achieve the, the whole um, variation of uh, materials just using one map and uh, using it in the different channels. I hope this tutorial was useful, and I see you the next time. Bye bye.